Gentlemen's waistcoats, when they're made in the Savile Row tradition, are really intricate garments to make, and there's a lot of separate steps involved with handwork. So they're really complicated, almost like a jacket without sleeves. For this tutorial, we're just going to consider the back of the waistcoat and how it's cut and how it's shaped, and in particular, how it's fastened at the back with a buckle and strap. Here's our waistcoat back laid out flat. It's made of two panels, main panels left and right, seamed together along the center back line. You can see up here we have the neck edge, the shoulder line, a long deep armhole, side seam, and the bottom hem. On either side of the center back we have these equidistant darts. You can see how this is put together so that it's shaped where there's more room across the back, but it fits nicely into the neck, fitted back down into the waist, and to add for extra fit, we have this, cent uh, this cross strap. Now it's shaped from about an inch and an eighth down to the inside width of your buckle, whatever kind of buckle you're going to use. And these straps are turned the way I like to do it, they're turned so that this seam lies in the center. So it's pressed open before it's turned. And I always like to choose an interesting fabric. Um, this is, you know, when you take the coat off, you want, still want the waistcoat to look nice. Here we have a shot green and orange. And, you, and when the light hits it, there's lots of pearlescence and uh, nice sheen on it. So it's really interesting to the waistcoat. Now we're going to look at how you might attach a buckle to this back strap of your waistcoat. I've chosen the type of buckle that I want to use. Um, I happen to have it in two colors, but I think the silver looks better. It goes with the iridescence of the waistcoat. And you can see how it's made. You have that left edge with a slight break in it, a slide in the middle, and then a serrated edge on the right. So the first thing that you do is be aware that you're going to position this in the center back, right along that center seam. And to do that, just insert from the top down the left strap. And again, you're going to work toward finishing this in the center, but be aware that you might have an additional adjustment, so you might take that into consideration when you're setting your buckle. So wrap the strap around that left side and pull it securely. I'm going to use a pin here uh, to show you what I would normally do with a needle and thread because I do this by hand because you want to wrap this tightly around and get the stitches as close to the buckle edge as you can. So you can see now how secure that is and it's not going to wobble around. Now you take the right side of your strap and insert it close to the strap that you just secured and now you're going to position this and you're going to feed it through between the slide and that right side serrated bar and then just simply pull it across until everything is aligned along that center seam. And you can see that you pull the strap from the short end, but it's when you pull the wider end of the strap that it locks into place. So that's how you set in a waistcoat buckle. There are so many different kinds of fittings that you can use to finish off your waistcoat, and we're going to take a look at a few of them. So I want to show you now all the different types of buckles and slides and adjusters that you could use. All of these are appropriate. All of these will go very well on the back of a waistcoat. It just depends how wide your strap is going to be and, and you know the design you want. Um, you can see that a lot of these have prongs on them. Uh, I'm going to choose this one here and we're just going to take a look at it. So if you're going to set this in, say this is your left side of your garment so again you feed it from the top down and I'll just put a pin here to show you just the position I'm not going to pin it very close to the edge but you would certainly sew it as close as you can get and now we'll take our other side of the strap and feed it up that right side pass it over the prongs and feed it through the back and then just pull everything tight. Now in time, these prongs are going to come through. But it's this another fairly secure way of setting the buckle onto your strap. 
Now here's a model which just has a slide in it, no prongs. And same way, from the top down, feed in what would be the left side of the strap and secure that with a pin. Now you can sew this with your machine, you can use your zipper foot, or you can do the whole thing by hand. And then taking your, the other side of the strap, you're going to feed that through and then pass the slide toward the middle and push the strap back down through. So now you have a, a small edge of, of teeth-like protrusions there that are going to keep everything in place. So there's another option. Now we mustn't forget the old trusty D-rings. Now these are a little bit big for the, this example, but this happens to be what I have in stock. But you could do the same thing with a much smaller set. And what you do is you just pass from top to bottom, pass your strap through both of these D-rings, and then make your secure set of hand stitches. And then take your second strap from the bottom up this time and put them through both rings and then part the rings and then pull your strap through just like this. So you can see that again, that's another very secure way. And finally, I want to show you a really interesting method that I learned from my father many, many years ago. And it's called the ladder wrap. And I'm going to apply this method using a side adjuster buckle. This is what's normally called a side adjuster and it has two slides on it. Um, if you take your strap and you push it through from bottom up, right in the center between those two slides. And what you're going to do next is you're going to wrap it around the end, but you're going to go between the end and that first slide and pull up the end. And then you're going to push the end down right next to where you came up. So you're going to match this strap now you can see what happens when you pull both of these, both sides of your strap, and you secure it at one end. You can see just how sturdy this is. And I'm going to show you the alternative. Now this is the traditional way of using this, where you pass the strap up through the middle, and then simply over the slide, and then out through the bottom. So with wear, this traditional way is a lot looser and it can just wiggle its way out where the ladder wrap is much more secure. In fact, my father taught me this when I was a young girl.